What's up, everybody? We're back. Yeah! yeah. Hey, welcome back to a Metal Edge Journey. Hey, so uh, we're we're kind of taking a break from our normal routine here. Normally, we'd be trying to tackle one of the four lists of top twenty albums that we're uh, that we're trying to go through. But uh, a couple weeks back, as uh, some of our some of you may have noticed, some of our new subscribers, uh, we did a reaction, a couple reactions to some Nightwish songs. And we realized that their new, brand new album, Yesterwind, uh, just came out about a week ago and some change now. And so we thought, hey, man, let's let's spend some time with it and let's give it a review. So, uh, you know, it's a nice it's a nice break from the normal stuff that we've been doing because we're supposed to be doing Korn's Follow the Leader right now, which has been put off for about a million years. But <laughs> true. this this was a good this was a good uh, substitute in its place. Hey, also, obviously, you may have noticed it's just me and Dave this week. Uh, good for you guys. Good for you guys. Y'all are winning. Um, we fired those other two yeah. guys. Yeah, uh, Jonah, Jonah and Jason are gone for good, never coming back. No, no, no. Hey, they, they just got life going on, and we wanted to, we wanted to you know, get this Nightwish uh, review out there and uh, get a chance to talk about it. So uh, we're going to do a very rare two-man show tonight. So here we go. We'll get into a quick history of the band, and we'll get right into the review. This is Nightwish, Yesterwind. Nightwish, formed in 1996, is a Finnish symphonic metal band from Kite. Kite? Uh, you know, I think Kite. Uh, Nightwish is the third best-selling musical act in Finland and are the most successful Finnish band worldwide with album sales over 10 million. Um, they were the 11th members inducted into the Finnish Music Hall of Fame. They've released 10 studio albums, including their rela latest release, Yesterwind, which was released in 2024. Uh, Yesterwind uh, is the band's 10th studio album. The band has confirmed that the album is, a th is the third in a trilogy, along with Endless Forms, Most Beautiful, and Human Nature. Uh, the title of the album is a word made by uh, band member Troy Dinocoli, um, which is described as the feeling of time, history, memory, and being connected to past generation. The band has described the album as being about hu humanism, history, and the inspiration thereof. The album produced four singles, Perfume of the Timeless, The Day Of, An Ocean of Strange Islands, and Lantern Light. So, you know, I know we talked about this before on, uh, on the first, on the reaction we did uh, for An Ocean of Strange Islands, but, so Dave and I, so if, enough. If, you're if you're following along with this show at all, um, you know, we used to have a different a different show called Three Guys and a Mic that uh, we did pop culture, and then we kind of dabbled in music a little bit. And one of the little side shows we did on that was uh, something called Half Hour Power, which was just like a little power metal top twenty five or thirty list or whatever. So anyway, so we got to spend some time with Wishmaster, two thousands Wishmaster. So that was kind of our uh, and my introduction into Night Wish. And I got a chance to revisit Wishmaster a little bit over the last little bit of time just to kind of see the difference. And we were corrected because we, we called them a power metal band for a lot of the um, An Ocean of Strange Islands um, review. They are definitely a symphonic metal band and more so today than they were then, for sure. What did you, uh, what did you find in listening to this album, Dave? Um, so, you know, I... I like you, my only experience with them was Wishmaster. And I can tell you, and, and I don't mean this with the with with absolute respect, I, I do feel like, and this is coming from somebody who's a complete wish uh sorry, Nightwish noob, uh, really, in the grand scheme of things. Uh I think this album is a lot more mature to me yeah. than Wishmaster. And I mean that not as a disrespect to Wishmaster. It's just for me this 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 seems to be a little bit more um, just kind of like up my alley in terms of, uh, to your point, this is much less power metal, more symphonic metal. Um, this, this feels much more like theatrical and, and just grandiose in scale. Um, yeah. So like for me, um, you know, and I, I realized Wish, Wishmaster also had a different vocalist. Um, you know, this, this has... Uh, uh, Floor Janssen. Uh, I'm sure I'm pronouncing that probably a little bit wrong. It, uh, yeah, it is, it is what it is. But uh, and I, I think it's just a preference, right? I'm sure there's there's fans of all. I think there's been like three main vocalists uh, for Nightwish. 
uh, four being the most recent one. Uh, I'm, I'm a bigger fan of her vocals overall. Uh, not to say she's necessarily better than the previous vocalists, but just it just uh, speaks to me a little bit more. And man, I, I will tell you overall, I was not... I knew I was going to like it based on the single that we heard. Um, yeah. But I actually like it more than I even initially thought. Um, because I guess part of my worry or concern was like an Ocean of Strange, thing, strange Things, Ocean of Strange Islands was going to be the best song on the record. And spoiler alert, I don't think it is. Um, it's not in my uh, my top three or my honorable mention. Uh, it, it's not in my top three. Uh, it's This is a really, really good album. Uh, and um, I did find myself like just even after I kind of knew what I around what I wanted to score it, I still found myself just listening to it just because it was fun to listen to. Yeah. Yeah. I spent, um, you know, like with just my schedule and everything, sometimes I got to kind of fit these listens in when I can. And it was kind of fortuitous. I had, I had a lot of opportunity to listen to this record over the last, I don't, we've been talking about it for like 10 days or something like that. So yeah, I had, a, I had a chance to listen to this. I, I tend to get to listen to some albums three or four times. I probably get to listen to this about 10 times over that time frame. And, um, yeah, and it was just one of those that just got better and better. Like, as you, you know, as it, as most albums do, right, where as you start learning the melodies, you start learning the songs you like, um, you know, you start picking up on the little things. And, look, and that's not always the case, right? I mean, we've we've done some albums that I've listened to the same amount of times, and they get worse over time. Yeah. I.e. The, I.e. the hair metal list. Um so, you know, this is something that is certainly was was great on the first listen and has continued to progress um, to be even better for me. Um, you know, it's it's just funny. It's like it, different songs stand out every time. Uh, but overall, I, I find myself really enjoying the record. Um, you know, we'll we'll get into our top tracks and stuff here in a little bit. But I mean, there is some. There are some standouts, but we also, you know, if you follow along with the show, we do a gimmick where we try to cut the album down to eight songs because we all know the sweet spot in metal is eight songs. And it was like, it's a hard cut. Like, yeah, it's a. And these aren't songs, like, none of them are ones that are like trash, like skippers by any means. Yeah. I, like, I, I had to sit there and look at it yeah, for like, a while. For me, I, I'm glad you brought that up. I was. Uh... You know, obviously, I I have four songs I'm gonna cut for the gimmick, uh, you know, for the category, right? But in reality, like, I just want people to know, like, I I would actually not skip these songs. Uh, these just, you know, if I had to, you know, this is more of like, you know, uh, gun to your head type situation. If I had to cut four songs, where would I? What would I cut? And, uh, you know, normally we do that and like on some albums that we listen to and there's some pretty obvious like, like, hey, this is this is clearly filler or, you know, it's it's close to clearly filler. I don't think really that was the case here. Um, I think it's a really good track listing. I know I saw some reviews of this, like after I'd listened to the record, some some reviews were a little bit critical in terms of. They thought that the track listing like favored the heavier songs up front, which I think is just not true. Like just objectively not true. There's some really heavy songs uh, towards the end of this album. Yeah, the weave is heavy. Yeah. That's like the second to last song, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. So um, I'm not really sure what that's all about, but I, I thought this record uh, uh, was surprisingly really, really enjoyable. Surprisingly for me, probably not surprising to the Nightwish fans. Yeah. But, you know, I, I kept thinking, and Dave, you made this reference a couple of times, and I know you didn't want to bring it up on the show, but I, I don't think it's, I don't think it's a bad thing, right? But, because you, you think about, you think about things like um, uh, Lord of the Rings, you know, with this, right? And it's not necessarily the lore, right? I mean, that's more of a blind guardian thing. But in terms of the epicness of, of, this, of the album, you know, like, I've never really ventured much into symphonic metal. Sim like, you know, there's been some 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 of our bands that get into some of the symphony stuff, right? Metallica, obviously, um, Ozzy with some songs, namely like Diary of a Madman, um, Machine Head doing you know doing some work with some strings and things like that. Uh, so pro prog metal kind of dips its toes into the symphonic world here and there. Yeah. But I would say, like, this is the first full-length symphonic metal album I've heard. Um, 
and man, I mean, it just takes you it ta- it takes you to a different place. Like the like the the orchestrations and everything going on with the songs. Like you know, it's one thing to hear, and I know I'm, I'm sure people are gonna roll their eyes when I talk about Symphony of Metallica, but we're Metallica fans. Sorry about it. But like you know, like Michael Kamen went back and wrote those arrangements for songs way after the fact, except for Nothing Else Matters and obviously um, the Train song. Uh, no Leaf remember. Clover. No Leaf Clover. There you go. The, the um, train song. Yeah, but you know, and then the rest of it was just kind of shoehorned in, right? So it's some are good, some are whatever. You know, I would like, I would love to go back and hear like you know, Metallica or other bands that we really love write something like this with the orchestration and everything in there. Cause I At think, the same man, time, just, you know, like, yeah, with, with that in mind. Up. Yeah. That's a really good idea. Like, I, 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 I'm sure, like, I wish there were bands who would kind of take that to the next level of, like, we're just gonna, I'm just going to stay on the Metallica train just because, like, it would be cool if Metallica did, like, what's too late? They're, they're older now. But, like, uh, hypothetically, if they would have yeah. done, like, a, 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 like a Symphony in Metallica. Like, if, if the second Symphony in Metallica album that came out, if instead of it, it just being another... Originals. Well, yeah, instead of it being just another live performance of songs we all know, yeah, if it was just like, hey, here's 10, 12... Uh, knowing Metallica it would be like 15 songs and they'd be like a yeah. 90 minute album. But it, <laughs> it'd be like, if it was like 10 or 12 songs eight. built from the ground up. Yeah, eight, obviously. But uh, realistically, yeah, eight, 12 songs built from the ground up with the symphony like together. Um, man, that, that, and forget Metallica for a second, just any band that has the potential to be something truly great. Uh which, you know, coming back to Nightwish, it was really interesting hearing that. And especially in the car, right, for me, you know, I got a long drive home from work. You know, I got a good 40, 45 minutes in, which, you know, admittedly, this album is a lot longer than that. So I don't get the full experience. 71. Yeah. So, but, you know, I get to hear a large chunk of it in one go. And, you know, with with my car kind of blasting, It's really, really enjoyable. Like to me, either in your car or with like a decent pair of headphones where you can kind of be uninterrupted. um, It's really, really enjoyable, like in that regard. So, yeah, Yeah. I'm definitely, you know, this isn't a category, but I'm definitely intrigued to hear more Nightwish. I'm sure there are other albums uh, that, you know, that they do this as well. So, I wonder, I mean, if, you know, anybody could tell us down in the comments, like, who's the, I don't know, should we do, like, it's just top 20 symphonic metal records, or is that going to be, like, 11 or 10 uh, Nightwish records? And then, yeah, or is there, like, a big four of of symphonic metal? So, hey, let, g- give us some input down there in the comments on that. You know, let us know, would you rather see, like, a top 20 albums of symphonic metal kind of, like, review, or maybe it may be a big four, if that makes more sense, but... Dave, who's your uh, who's your MVP for the record? Um, look, so I have two answers, and they're this is cheating. So, but there's two of us, so I have you know I have, feel like I have to talk twice as long to make up the time. Uh, the real answer is Tomas or Tomas or Thomas. Uh, I'm gonna get this wrong. Hello, Painin. Sure, I'm sure that's wrong. I think that's the that that is the uh, if if I'm if I'm if I'm answering this with my brain, that's the that is the choice because you know he, all the tracks are written by him. He's the he's the main maestro, the the, the producer, the, the brainchild behind this album and and largely this band from my limited understanding. Um, but my heart is gonna go with Floor Johnson. Uh, her vocals, her vocal performance, uh, just carry every song for me uh, in such a way like. She is perfect uh, for this. I mean, this is one of those things where, you know, it, it's it's just completely irreplaceable. Well, I say that. They've had three vocalists. But she's really, really good. Um, like, yeah. objectively, she is a strong vocalist um, and immensely talented. Uh, and we, we've seen it live. It's, it's, it's effortlessly reproduced live, so... Yeah, I have the same thing as a tie um, for MVP, but I did have a special call out for uh, Troy Denockley. Uh He's kind of like the 
the glue guy looks like for the band. I mean, he does plays every, like does all, all the, the other stuff. The, yeah, the Uland pipes. He does some guitars. Uh, the male vocals for the album, which are also really good. Um, so just kind of a special call out to him as a utility guy. Um, just really kind of, I think, rounding the band in the shape. But definitely Floor and Thomas. I, I think those are the two standouts. I had a hot take on this, Dave, on this album. What's that? It's the album of the year. Oof. It's the album of the year. Prove me wrong. I'm trying to think. Like what other what other new albums have come out this year? I mean, we can't we can't count Love Bites EP too. It's an EP. It's not an album. Yeah. Uh, dude, that might be an actual. That's 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 that might be a cold take. Uh, but no, that's a good yeah. hot take. I mean, for us, um, that is a really good point. It's just you know the the reason why I'm kind of stunned or like I can't think of anything is because we've been reviewing a lot of older material lately, yeah. and uh, largely. Because not a lot of albums this year have really spoken to us necessarily. Like, has it warranted us to take time to review it outside of the Love Bites EP? But, um, yeah, man, I mean, I, I'd have to really think about that. But it's absolutely top three for me at, at, without even thinking about it. And you're probably right. It might be album of the year material for sure. Um I, I also have a hot take. I was prepared this oh, week. Okay. Um, All right. This album doesn't need any more guitar solos than it has, which it doesn't have very it doesn't have like too too many. Well, um, you know, so it's it's funny you say that, right? Because I, I wanted to give some love uh to the guitar player uh Impu. Yeah. I, I I don't I don't know if I'm saying that right, but I want to give some love to him, but you know, like and I'm not this is no way any shitting on him by any means good player obviously but like there's just not like the guitar doesn't stand out as an instrument on this album because everything is put together so well like there are there are some solo moments but it's not you know it's not made to be a showcase for him yeah it's it, everything is more of the the sum of all the parts right it, it's, yeah. a, it's a it's a um it's an orchestra it's an orchestration right it's it's uh it's you know to your point you know it, it's not it's not built just to showcase his guitar work you know this isn't uh this isn't a dream theater uh and for those that don't know i'm i'm, I'm a diehard dream theater fan this isn't a dream theater wank fest situation where every uh, every instrument gets uh like you know a 45 second solo piece yeah. in every song all right well you know like jordan rudis i mean he shows up like as a as an additional guitar player in Dream Theater, yeah. just 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 ripping like keyboard solos nonstop, and it's like outside of some of the some of the piano work on this, like there's nothing that truly stands out as like a keyboard solo to me, other than just I think kind of creating like the background, the ambiance yeah, it, for, the, for the songs. It's weird because you have like I don't know the average song length because I you know I didn't do the math, but like you have nine, eight, you know, over five, over six minute. You know, most songs are, are over the five minute plus mark. And if you really stop and just really, really think about it, how many actual solos from any member of the band are there on this record? I don't have the answer. I just more of a rhetorical question. But like that was kind of my hot take is like when I started to really think about it is there's really not that many solo moments per se. Yeah. But all the guitar work is really, really good. Like, like spoiler, I really enjoy the song Sway. I think the guitar, like the acoustic guitar, like riffs and licks in that song are so good, like so yeah. perfect for the vocal melody and harmonies between uh, Floor and Troy uh, together on the on the vocals that like you don't need guitar solos necessarily. Um, so, yeah, that was that was my take. Nice. Hey, two hot takes, man. Look at us doing doing the actual work. Uh, hey, let's get into top tracks. Dave, uh, go ahead and go first. Okay. Um, look, mine are... I, I do have a notion of Strange Islands as a an honorable mention. Um, I also have The Weave as an honorable mention. I, got, I had two this week. Now, I have a trifecta of songs that... They're not in order, but... Or they are in order on the album, but they're not in my exact uh, order. 
Uh, but I'll give that order right now. And number three, I have Children of the Atta. Mm. Uh, or Atta. I'm not quite sure how to pronounce that, but whatever. It's it's, it's Atta. She says it in the song, bro. I, okay, I'm dumb. That's Don't worry about me. Uh, my number two, and it was close. I flipped a couple of times, but I just went with my gut. My number two is Perfume of the Timeless. Um, I love that song. I love the chorus. Uh, the song starts basically with a symphony keyboard kind of opening um and then it gets into a heavier portion of the song and the song has like ebb and flow to it i just really enjoy it enjoy the chorus a lot and then number one for me is i just i just accepted it it was sway i absolutely love that song like it is legitimately like i haven't shown it to my wife who traditionally doesn't doesn't like metal she likes like pop music she likes some rock and stuff like that but um i bet you i could show her sway and she like wouldn't hate it or whatever uh like I, I, that song is just a beautiful song to me i love it uh, so that would be my number one all right that's a good list uh i have one honorable mention um it's the third track the anti-kathera mechanism um uh, dude love the melodies in that it's it's good given job off. pronouncing that by the way I look i'm taking a stab at it okay um you know it's it's given off some serious like cashmere vibes with uh with like the vocal melody uh, so I really liked it. Dave, I'm with you on Sway, number three for me. Um, again, like, I'm going to say vocal melodies four times in a row here because it's, they're so good. Uh, but Sway with the acoustic guitar, um, just really, that song more than, the, more than the others, I think, transports you. Like, you could close your eyes and see yourself on a fucking mountaintop, you know, somewhere just listening to that shit. Uh, number two for me, uh, Something Whispered Follow Me. Uh, dude, just cool song. Like, just kind of, it's got kind of like this, like mellow pace to it. It's got a groove. You know, it kicks in with like, uh, with Floor just doing it like her normal normal vocals with nothing much in the background, and then it kicks in just a tasty little guitar lick in the back, and then the song just continues to take off from there. So, I really like that song. Uh, number one for me, Perfume of the Timeless. I mean, just you know, I. I I think it stands head and shoulders for me as as easily the best song um, on this album. It's fucking awesome. Like the me- the melodies, the orchestrations, everything about this song. Like like initially, a couple of initial listens, I was listening to this at work, and I would just kind of have to put it on and do some work and listen, do some work and listen. And every time this song came on, I had to stop and be like, "What the fuck is that?" And it's the same song every single time I went back to it. So I was like, "Man, that's." This song slaps so hard. It's so. a banger, and and I feel so mad because that was one of the singles, and we like we missed it. We, we did, missed didn't, it. We didn't react to it or whatever when it came around. So, and I'm not sure. Like I, I don't know. I, I I'm sure we would have liked it. I mean, I I can't remember. I can't give you my first reaction the first time I heard it. Right now, I'm sure we would have liked it, but like I'm kind of glad that that you just had it for yeah. yourself, basically. Yeah. Yeah, I'm I'm glad we got to listen to it and kind of just kind of soak it in a little bit. Plus, we wouldn't uh, have Jason but, being like, "There's two minutes of, uh, yeah, of nothing happening." Uh. I don't even know who Jason is anymore. Um, so, like we mentioned earlier, we do have a gimmick uh, where we do like to cut these albums down to eight songs. As we know, uh, the sweet spot in metal is eight tracks. So. This album does have 12 tracks, so, you know, for following the rules here, we do have to cut four songs. This was a tough cut. Um, you know, I we we do tend to, I, I'll speak for myself, I do tend to easily cut, like, the, the lead-in tracks, yeah, and intros and stuff like that, so this is in no way crapping on Yesterwind, the title track. Uh, I think it's a great intro into that song. I think it definitely belongs on this record. Um but look, if I have to cut to get down to eight songs, I'm I'm gonna keep, you know, more of the actual meat of the album here. Um, the other tracks I cut uh, for me, uh, this was probably my least favorite song on the album. Um, still wouldn't skip it, but um, definitely just kind of as I went through it, it's, it kind of became less and less interesting for me. Was the day of? Um, I have uh, He Wraith. Uh, as uh, another song on here and then the last cut I had was Spider Silk okay Josh unbelievable I I counted on my hand three we have three of the same cuts okay nice Uh, so I'll start with those same three Um, 
I, have, I do also have Yester Wine for all the same reasons that you do. Uh, there's nothing wrong with it. I would not skip it. It goes right into an Ocean of Strange Islands, uh, and it's fine, which functionally makes Ocean of Strange Islands like a 12-minute song. Whatever. That's which is... Fine. I would have... I, I, mean, I would have like, almost I, rather of them just made that song a 12-minute song. Yeah, like, I'm I'm okay with it being the way it is on the album, but, you know, for this exercise, I hate to cut it because I think it does go so well with that song, and that song goes in so many different directions. Like, I mean, live, like, I, I want them to mention, combine it. But it's, like, number five for me, yeah. Yeah, I do want to see this band live. We haven't talked about that, but, like, in general, like, I would just say, like, I really want to see they ever... I um, agree. Um, all right, so Yesterwind. I also have the day of, and similar thing. I feel like after every subsequent listen, and and look, I, you didn't mention this, but I will. I, I I think part of it is that it's it's sandwiched in between two very strong songs, um, which has happened on other albums, like like historically for me, uh, because the anti kathera mechanism is so good. And then the perfume, perfume of the timeless is so good right after the day of that. I just find myself like, like, there's nothing egregious about the day of, but like, I'm not. I'm just I just like, find myself wanting to go to the next song yeah, so I can hear perfume. Yeah, kind of like because for me, like the the next three songs after the day of are all winners, like 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 bangers to another degree. So anyway, that was my second cut. I also cut Herath. Uh, just I don't know, like. That is the one song on here that I, I don't know that I've like vibed with it yet. Like, I don't know if I truly understand the song yet, like how to enjoy it. It's fine. I don't skip it. And I like, it's, it's a fine song, but I, that would be like the weaker song on the album if I had to pick, actually pick one. Uh, and then look, Josh, you're going to hate me, but I did pick Lantern Light as my last cut. And there's nothing wrong with that song. Uh, like I, I sk- I like it. I listen to it every time. Uh, but for the purposes of this, I do always like last songs to be like heavy. And so I feel like the weave is a slightly better closing track. Uh, I almost wish Lantern Light and Weave were flipped on the album. Yeah. Just for, I just for Lan- Lantern own. Light would have been like it was number eight for me. Yeah. Like that's it's the closer on my eight track so of my my eight track album. Yeah. So Again, it's like a showcase for Floor, basically. It's a softer uh, song. Um, it's a good song, but it, it would be my... It, it just barely didn't make the cut for me. Yeah. All right, well, hey, we're coming into the last spot here. This is where we like to give our score for the album. And just to give you a context on how we do the scores, for a lot of folks out there, an average score would be a 7. Well, for us, it's a 5. So anything 4.9 and below, that's various levels if we would not recommend the album. Five and above is various levels of we would recommend the album, with nine through ten being just all time classic records. Um, so I do want to take the time to give Jason's score. He did submit his score. Um, so, but it is quite frankly, it's kind of a bullshit score. Um, so look, we're just we're just gonna give it at the end after you guys hear our two good scores, and so that way you guys don't have to hear his his garbage score. So uh, I'll go first. Um, you know, like I said, look, I, I think this is album of the year material. Um, so obviously, this is gonna constitute a good score here. Uh, this is a score that, like, I'm I'm putting it right now. This is almost just a placeholder uh, for me because it, you know, getting to spend some more time with this record. And honestly, like going, I'm going to go back and spend some more time with the band. Um, this is a score that could grow for me. Um, but I'm going to come in at at what I think is a very good score here at 8.1. Okay. Uh, Josh, I just sent you my score just so you know I haven't changed it or anything like that. Um, so I also think this is a really good album. Again, keep in mind how we score. Seven is not average. I'm not giving it a seven, by the way, but seven is not average. Five and above is considered good or five is average. So I'm coming in pretty strong as well. Uh, I really, really enjoyed this album. This was a surprise uh, for me how much I would enjoy all of the songs on the record. Um, And uh, I'm coming in pretty strong at an 8.4. I I really do. I think, Josh, I think you might be spot on there um, with 
it being album of the year material. Um, I'm not sure what is on the horizon in terms of other albums that might come out in the next few months of this year, but um, there would have to be something really, really, really special to come out to dethrone this. So I would, I would all, I, I think at this point, yeah, I think we can tentatively, tentatively put this at album of the year for, for, for me as well until, unless proven otherwise. Um, there and, you go. and for the I, sake I of think it, that's the, uh, I think that's the, the, the thumbnail message album of the year question mark. Yeah, let's, let's, that's, that's definitely clickbaity enough. Uh, so that gives us without Jason's score, so the real score, 8.25 yeah. uh, is the score. Now, now let's factor in Jason's uh, stupid ass 6.7. What a dummy. Uh, that would bring it down to a 7.48, 7. Um, which I don't think it deserves. Uh, yeah, I mean, historically, Jason... Now, to his credit, I'll since he can't defend himself, I will try to defend Jason a little bit on his score. Uh, I'm not reading off of his notes. I'm just going off of my knowing him as a friend. Um, historically, he doesn't like grandiose type music like this. Um, you know, he, he he doesn't he doesn't like like rough vocals. He doesn't like floors vocals. He doesn't like grandiose albums. He doesn't like, I mean, what is, like, I, he's got such a, a defined niche. Hey, look, he's older than us. The man knows what he likes. I, I, I mean, he's the only one who knows what he likes because we all seem Does to he know? We all seem to struggle with it. But, uh, you know, so for him, a 6.7 legitimately is a good score. It is higher than I thought he was going to give this album. Um, so... Take that for what you will. Uh, Jonah didn't send us mm. a score. Uh, I don't know if he, he he may not have had time to fully digest the album, so he may not have felt like it was fair to score it. We'll get his uh, we'll get his score on the next episode. Yeah, but uh, so. the, the official score from us is going to be eight point two five. Sorry, Jason. We're just going to go with that. Fair enough. Well, hey, if you think Jason's score is pathetic as shit, go ahead and hit the like, hit the subscribe. We're putting out weekly metal content right now. We got metal reactions, metal reviews, metal time machines, and metal brackets, and all kinds of other cool shit. And hey, in the meantime, live long and prosper. Take it easy, everybody. See ya. Later.